Hello everyone, welcome to Apti Plus Academy for Civil Services. It's a video on daily news and editorial analysis, which I'll be covering from the Hindu and Indian Express. It's the most important news and editorial of the day that is relevant for the preparation of civil services examination will be discussed in this session. Let's get started with the news topic list. Today is 14th of December. The first important news that is India will be the first to hold satellite spectrum auction. Second, panel concern over the low women participation in the Central Armed Police Forces. Third, House panel flags over the establishment of disability centers. Second last, that is slow commercializing of solar project. And the last is an editorial conservation bill that endangers the forest right. Apart from the news and editorial discussion, at the end of this video, there will be MCQ based questions. And these questions will be based on current affairs that will help you for the upcoming prelims examination. So without any further delay, let's get started. And before I begin the session, those of you who are new to our channel, do not forget to subscribe Apti Plus Academy for Civil Services on YouTube. If you like this video, if you find this video informative and helpful, do not forget to press a like button. Starting the session with the first news, that is India will be the first to hold satellite spectrum auction. Something important for general studies paper 3 under the subtopic that is achievement of India in science and technology, Indianization of technology and development of new technology. So according to the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India chairman, India will become the first country to auction spectrum for satellite communication which is also known as SETCOM. The move is designed to attract investment in the telecom sector. NTRI, that is Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, will soon make the recommendations to make permissions required for the satellite communications from various ministries, information and broadcasting, space and telecommunication, to enhance the ease of doing business in this sector. So there will be a coordination among the ministries which is dedicatedly working towards the communication and enhancing the level of communication. So there will be integration and the permission will also be required from all these ministries. Now what is the roadmap for the government? The Telecom Regulatory Authority of India will be coming up with some sort of model for the auctions of the space spectrum. While the telecom operator have operated to allocate spectrum through the auctions for satellite communication, satellite industries has plays basically your satellite industries ke players hai. they have opposed it but in a longer run this is something will help India's telecom sector and how far it is relevant that the satellite internet is critical for rural area the internet provider via satellite has a critical and important role to play in meeting the target of 2018 national digital communication policy also known as NDCP to provide universal broadband connectivity in India by 2022. So this was actually envisaged in the policy which was released by the central government in 2018. Now this policy also lists the goal of giving all gram panchayat 10 Gbps speed internet by 2022. And for this context, the 10 Gb is the fastest internet speed available in the world. And India has yet to set up broadband infrastructure for all 250,000 panchayat. So if you see the work progress which was supposed to be done for the rural India has not been yet met. The target is already about to elapse. Now advantages for the remote area. The satellite communication is extremely useful for providing broadband services in remote hilly and inaccessible area. And it is also the medium through which the communications can be established through the disaster zone when the normal communication is affected. So this will have an added advantage for the remote area. Apart from remote area, jo hilly areas hongi, unke liye bhi kafi zyada helpful. Hongi. The satellite communication services are provided through the low earth orbit satellite, which has a box which is suspended in the remote areas and hilly region, which creates a Wi-Fi spot through a broadband services that are provided. So this is how it actually works. And it has a lot more advantage specifically in the hilly and the area that is the remote area, the remotest area of the country. Now aiming this kite, I received the reference from the Department of Telecommunications for the spectrum to be put with the auction and associated aspect of the satellite communications. 
Auction should be designed to attract the investor in the telecom sector. Tera is working for the auction model. Still, the model is not yet completed. And applicants need permissions from the ministries of information, broadcasting, space, and telecom. So there will be a three level of coordination which will be there for the final approval. Moving to the other news, panel concerned over the low women participation in the Central Armed Police Forces, something important for Gender Studies Paper 1. Under the subtopic, that is the role of women, women organization, population associated issues, poverty and development issue. This can also be important for Gender Studies Paper 2, where government policies and intervention are concerned. So recently, a parliament committee, this was basically the parliamentary standing committee on home affairs. They have expressed the disappointment with regards to minuscule numbers of women participation, especially with regards to the recruitment that is being done to the central armed police forces like CRPF and BSF. They have sought actions to create a conductive environment for the border outpost so that women can be motivated to join the security forces. There are a lot of loopholes that is also existing. We'll discuss that on the later part of the video. But if we talk numbers, it's also less than men. Ke comparison mein kafi kam hai. The Parliamentary Standing Committee on Home Affairs had noted that despite the efforts by the Home Ministry itself to encourage the recruitment of women in the Central Armed Police Forces and Assam Rifles, the strength of women personnel is abysmal low, which is at 3.68% with the total strength of the CAPF. So CAPF ki jo total strength hai, usme sirf or sirf abhi 3.66% hi women ki participation hai. This is again an important factual data for all of you, uh, specifically for general studies paper one. And those of you preparing for CAPF examination, aapke liye interview point of view se data kafi relevant. Now observation by the panel, the committee observed that in 2016, it was decided by the government to observe 33% of the post for the constable level being filled by the women in CRPF and CISF. To begin with, 14 to 15% post at the constable level with boarding guarders where they are in BSF, SSB, that is Sasatra Sima Bell and ITB. The committee is disappointed to note that the women constitute only 3.68% of the total sanctioned CAPF strength. The committee recommended the Ministry of Home Affairs to take concrete actions and increase the representation of the women in the Central Armed Police Forces. Now, some recommendations that was given by the panel itself. The Parliamentary Standing Committee on Home Affairs has recommended the phase-wise recruitment. The phase-wise recruitment ki baat ki gai hai for women and which may be conducted on a fast track, particularly for CISF, Central Industrial Security Force, and Central Reserve Police Forces. So, these two forces are phase-wise recruitment. Ki baat ki hai, jo panel thi. Creating a conducive environment, the committee further said that the steps should be taken to create a conducive environment in a border outpost by making a separate arrangement so that women are motivated to join. So this is again something very important to provide right platform so that the women are appreciated to join the forces. Now identifying problems, the committee also recommended that the Home Ministry should strive to identify the preventing problem. women ke participation hai wo itni low hai and even giving up practical solutions to encourage the women participation, right? And last but not the least is the hometown posting. So, this is an important factor which is very important for women. Important hai. One of such solutions could be posting women to the personnel, particularly in the CISF and CRPF near their hometowns, which would serve as an incentive to them to join their forces and run to increase the participation of women in these forces as envisaged by the government of India. Now, the panel noted that the Home Ministry in examining and deliberating on increasing the leaves for the CFP personnel should also be there. And it recommended that the proposals should be considered positively and finalized at the earliest, and it will boost the morale of the Central Armed Police Forces personnel. Proposal for additional posting may also be positively considered for enabling this decision. So, if you're writing in mains paper, if you attempt these questions, make all the recommendations that is given by the panel. So, that means me all the points that I have discussed with the panel ke jo recommendations hai, wo ap direct ad is likh sakte. Now, looking into the data uh, for Central Armed Police Forces, for all the, there are basically six forces that is operating. CAP, uh, CRPF ki baat kare, total sanctions 3 lakh ki, jisme women is only 8,000 
258. This is 2.54 परसेंटेज यू बेटर राइट परसेंटेज दैट विल बी मोर रेलिवेंट फॉर द एग्जामिनेशन बी एस एफ की अगर बात करें यहाँ पे वुमेन के पार्टिसिपेशन पूरे टोटल सैंक्शन स्टैंड में सिर्फ टू परसेंट है सेंट्रल इंडस्ट्रियल सिक्योरिटी फोर्स में फाइव पॉइंट टू फोर परसेंट दिस इज अमंग द हाइएस्ट राइट बिकॉज दे गॉट पोस्टिंग मोस्टली इन द अर्बन एरियाज सशस्त्र सीमा बन टू पॉइंट जीरो नाइन और असम राइफल की बात करें दिस इज 1.38 पॉइंट थ्री एट सो दीज आर द नंबर्स द एवरेज इज फॉर दू पॉइंट सेवन जीरो दर न्यूज हाउस पैनल फ्लैग्स ओवर कंसर्न ओवर द एस्टेब्लिशमेंट ऑफ द डिसबिलिटी सेंटर समथिंग इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर जनरल स्टडीज पेपर टू अंडर द सब टॉपिक दैट इज वेलफेयर स्कीम्स फॉर द वनरेबल सेक्शन ऑफ द पॉपुलेशन बाय द सेंटर एंड द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट so the parliamentary standing committee on social justice and empowerment has raised concern over the casual approach by the union government for the establishment of ddrc that is district disability rehabilitation center or committee ne observe kiya that with just 55 to 60 district rehabilitation center were made functional so far targeted of 269 to jahan pe target di gayi thi 269 ke wahan pe abhi sirf 55 or 60 hi complete ho gaya the parliamentary standing committee has said that the government should lay down the proper road map and the timeline and even the execution part that how need to be work how the target need to be achieved within the time bound manner and it is very important to develop the overall infrastructure setup for the disabled people they are basically the differently able people so district disability rehabilitation is a bahut important factor hogi in marginalized section of society Now inherent deficiencies पाई गई हैं The committees in its report has said that in its report which was submitted on the Department of Empowerment for Personal Disabilities to the Lok Sabha has said that is expected that the revised guideline of the scheme would correct the inherent deficiency and clear the path for setting the targeted number of DDS. However, the concern expressed by the committee is not likely to get addressed. And now, after the revised guideline, it would be mandatory to enforce this rules and regulation, and definitely to speed up the overall establishment of the DDRC. Now, what was the reply from the ministry? The Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment has informed that the panel, basically, they have informed the panel that it has increased the number of disabilities covered. From seven to twenty-one in two thousand eighteen, and the revised guideline call for setting up of more DDRC for the implementation in twenty twenty-three. But the panel in its report that was stable in the winter session, the committee is unable to understand how the department would process the proposal that is received from the state and UTs unless the guideline are not implemented. This is what, in defence, the ministry has. a table their report their reply to the parliament. Moreover, the panel said that the government defence. of planning to set up the model drc and other emulate against is no timeless for the preparation of the model ddrc features now moving to the other news slow commercializing of the solar project something important for general studies paper 2 under the sub topic that is the government policies and intervention for the development of various sectors and issues arising from a design and implementations Ministry of New and Renewable Energy has informed the Parliament that the Union Government so far has sanctioned the solar project with a capacity of thirty-nine thousand megawatt, but only one fourth have actually been commercialized. Right? So the project is government's that is scheme for development of solar power and ultra meter solar power projects, and a total of only fifty-seven solar park of the aggregate capacity that is thirty-nine thousand two eighty-five megawatt is sanctioned till November. और उसमें सिर्फ अभी तक 10,027 मेगावाट ही कंप्लीट हो पाए दिस इज वन थर्ड ऑफ द प्रोजेक्ट दैट वाज कंप्लीटेड साइटिंग द शॉर्टफॉल द मिनिस्ट्री हैज सेड दैट द सोलर पावर हैज बीन कैंसिल्ड ड्यू टू द स्लो प्रोग्रेस तो कई ऐसे प्रोजेक्ट्स थे जिनके स्लो प्रोग्रेस के वजह से उनके सैंक्शन उनके जो एलोकेशन हुई थी उन्हें कैंसिल कर दिए सम चैलेंजेस इन द सेक्टर द की चैलेंजेस इंक्लूड द हडल्स इन द एक्विजिशन ऑफ द लैंड बिकॉज अ सोलर पावर need the land acquisition which has to be accompanied by the state government policies mismatch in the time to set up a project infrastructures to route the power produced to the grid environmental issues held in the economic activities due to covid-19 right so these were some of the major problem that was faced du- during the establishment of the solar power plant. ना बर्ड हैबिटेड अफेक्ट हुई है कई बार सोलर प्लांट को लेकर के इसमें सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने भी इंटरव्यून किया है वैसे दैट 
So in reference to the environmental issues, the Ministry of Renewable Energy has mentioned that the Great Indian Busted issues was again highlighted. And in recent time, the habitat of the GIB, which is a critically endangered species, has been there. And less than 200 in Rajasthan has been incurred upon the solar power project, particularly by the transmissions line to endanger this part. The Supreme Court in April, recently this year, directed the power companies to lay down the solar cables in Rajasthan through few companies compiled with the orders. The new and renewable energy ministry has told the Supreme Court in December 21 that laying underground cables were impractical and would greatly raise the cost of the power. And India has committed to install 1,75,000 of the megawatt renewable energy by 2022 out of which one lakh megawatt from the solar power is concerned. So this is a data, factual data, which even you can use in the mains examination. As on October 2022, 61,000 megawatt of the solar power plant was installed according to the number that was presented by the ministries in the parliament itself. Now, if you look into a major project of the renewable energy, you can see these are some of the major projects in the north. We have Puga Geothermal Plant. Then in Madhya Pradesh, we have Riva. Gobar Dhan Power Engine, Ramaska Environment, Simdari Kurnul, then there is Munupal Windfall. So these are the other in Rajasthan, Jasmil, Pakta Solar Plant. So you can just pause this video, you can list out the entire project that is there. Even sometimes UPSC tend to ask a question directly with regards to map. So check out which particular solar plant or renewable energy is located in which particular locations. Now, moving to the editorial of the day, conservation bill that endangers the forest right, something important for general studies paper two under the subtopic that is conservation, environmental pollutions, degradation and EIA. So what is relevant under this editorial? So first talking about the theme, the theme is about the wildlife protection amendment bill and the editorial focuses upon the aim of the bill. What is the aim of this bill? We look into that. Second is the other amendment. Criminal law and wildlife conservation, constitutional provisions of the wildlife, right, and study based in Madhya Pradesh. A case study that will look into the details. The parliament has recently passed the Wildlife Protection Amendment Bill. I've also made a discussion in this regard. You can watch that video in the playlist section. The Wildlife Protection Amendment Bill makes significant amendment to Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. So this was a major changes that was brought in by the bill. The Wildlife Protection Act of 1972 have safeguarded numerous species of wild animals and plant by prohibiting all forms of hunting and importantly creating an involvement areas where wildlife conservation may be carried out. So this is the main provisions, main theme behind the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. Now what is the aim of this bill? The bill aims to increase the protection of species for the protected areas by law and this will give uh, regulations as actually backing to them. The plan will be implemented by the provision of the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wildlife, Flora and Fauna, that is known as sites. And the bill seeks for the better management of protected areas and also provide for certain permitted activities like grazing, movement of livestock and bona fide use of drinking household, basically drinking water, drinking and household water by the local communities. So this will be permissible. One of the most important amendment that is brought in is the insertion of section 43 by which permitting elephants in the schedule one will be uh, there and it will be used for religious and any other purposes as well. This amendment received for heavy criticism from the wildlife activists and animal experts. Now some other important amendment that was brought in. So other amendment include that insertion of new schedule for the species that is listed under the site's appendix as well as constitute the standing committee to exercise the power and duties that is delegated uh, to the state's wildlife board in the section 6 of the wildlife protection act the proposed section 49e provides for the designated management of the authority by the central government as well and the authority will be responsible for the issuance of permits certificates for the trade of the scheduled species in accordance with the sites and the submissions of the report. So everything will be in obligations and mandatory provisions that is already envisaged under the sites. Now criminal law and wildlife conservation, 
the need for criminal law to assess the wildlife conservation has remained unchallenged since the inceptions or just time se agar regulations ki baat ki jaye the complete prohibitions and creation for protected areas that is pa while the conservation has undertaken without inference from the local dwellers community state forest department and control over the forest so ground ki agar baat kare practically it will be again very tough and not feasible to actually you know look into the other part where dwelling and other things are not actually allowed the recent move to increase the penalty is as four times government has ko four times badhaya jahan pe pehle 10000 hua karti thi usse badha ke 25000 ki gayi multiple mein four times pe penalties ko badhai gayi hai which will be again creating a problem for lot more people who are residing in the area and they are not actually aware of the rules and regulations now what are the constitutional provision in this regard जो फोर्टी सेकेंड अमेंडमेंट हुई थी कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन में 1976 में दैट कॉल फॉर फॉरेस्ट प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ द वाइल्ड लाइफ एंड एनिमल बर्ड वाज ट्रांसफर्ड टू द स्टेट फ्रॉम द स्टेट टू द कंकरेंट सब्जेक्ट दिस इज अगेन इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट जो स्टेट लिस्ट थी उसे हटा करके कंकरेंट इसमें रखा गया एंड फिफ्टी वन जी ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन स्टेट दैट इट शैल बी द फंडामेंटल ड्यूटी ऑफ एवरी सिटीजन टू प्रोटेक्ट एंड इम्प्रूव द नेचुरल इन्वायरमेंट इंक्लूडिंग द फॉरेस्ट एंड वाइल्ड लाइफ now study that was based in madhya pradesh a study of the criminal justice and police accountability projects that has been oppressed from the caste communities of the scheduled tribe another forest dweller communities from the majority were accused in the wildlife crimes why because they are not actually aware that what is crime and what not is a crime and causes will file the wildlife protection act did not pertain solely to comparatively serious offenses like hunting collecting woods honey and even mushroom were formed to be prosecuted under this act to actually jo log hain unko pata nahi hai ki kya kya cheeze is rules ke andar aati hain even there is a violation of law that is also taking place right over 95% of the cases that is filed in the forest department are still pending and fishing which form an important part of the subsistence of the tribal communities also come to be the regulated criminalized as a part of wildlife protection act so definitely it need to have a serious thought the government need to look upon the loopholes that is still existing in this bill and need to correct so that the livelihood options for an individual residing in the forest area should not be hampered so this is how a critical question in the mains and part can be asked or of course question ko analyze karna hoga mains examination Now moving to the MCQ questions of the day. Before I proceed, just to tell you the answers of yesterday questions. For first question, the correct option is C. For second question, also the correct option is C. Today's MCQ for practice. Financial Action Task Force. क्या आपके बारे में बताने हैं? The Financial Action Task Force is an intergovernmental body. The objective is to set standard and promote effective implementations, regulatory and operational measures for combating money laundering and terrorism financing. Which among the following is the correct option? Whether one, two, three. or a b c d you can choose any one of them now the comprehensive economic partnership agreement which was recently approved by the cabinet uh, which was between which of the following countries india as in mauritius india sri lanka india japan or india maldives so do check it out for the correct option this type of question will definitely give you an extra edge and practicing a lot more question will provide confidence and even clarity about the topic so this was all about for the daily news and editorial analysis followed by the mcq questions If you have any other concern, you can let me know. I'll be more than happy to assist you. For time being, I'm signing off. Thank you so much for watching this video.